everyone, how are you doing? Um, it's September, <laughs> things are a little stressed uh, here. My wife has um, had to go back into work in school um, and I'm uh, anticipating having to go back quite shortly into the university. So we're both of us going to be in situations with um, teenagers and young adults uh, in enclosed spaces. Um, the university thankfully is is taking things fairly sensibly, trying to maintain distance between people and providing masks, so that's good. Um, but the school is not so much. Um, yeah, full classes of kids with no masks and no ventilation and yeah, not not a great situation. So yeah, we're all um, a little bit sad and stressed by that. Um, if you're a parent and your kids are back at school, I hope you're very thankful <laughs> for <laughs> for what the teachers are doing because um, it's not a nice situation to have to put yourself in when you know that there's still a killer virus on the loose um, and it hasn't gone away and they're just opening up huge swathes of the population to massive exposure to it so yeah it's not it's not good um uh, so that sucks but i was able to get away for uh, a week last week um down in dorset to see my folks which was nice I haven't seen them for uh, about six months more than six months now so um yes it, it's been that's been very nice going along coastal path walks and forgetting about the storm that is uh, going down in in this country and the world but i think largely this country at the moment anyway um so while I was down there, I did manage to uh, take a bit of sculpting. I normally take a little bit of sculpting or a bit of painting to do, um, in addition to a bit of reading and some walks um, and playing lots of games. Um, but I managed to take a little bit of sculpting with me to just pick up and do odd bits and pieces um, uh, in between times. Uh, and what I took were these... Um, my uh, wood elves, you remember that I was sculpting some wood elves. Um, I did some dollies, uh, six, six um, just bare figures there with, with weapons. Sent those off to be cast, um, and uh, the cast came back, and then I've cut them up and I've repositioned some of them, and then I've built on them with um, with green stuff to do uh, to do the finished. Um, articles and I've got uh, three sets here. I've got um, basically some some warriors um, who've just got standard hand weapons and uh, a mix of kind of Celtic with maybe a little bit of um, uh, North American um, Aboriginal um, attire, uh, a little bit of. Um, dark age in the hoods and studded leather and things going on so a bit of a mashup um there uh, same with these guys but although these guys are armed with spears so um eight spear guys there and then um these guys the the sort of uh war dancery type figures with the the classic um punky mohicans and um studded leather and belts and exposed chests and um, mostly dual hand weapons uh, with those guys and the idea is that um, I'm going to use uh, some of the remaining um, dollies to do uh, a champion and uh, a magic user a kind of mage figure uh, for each of these sets and then they'll go off to be cast and um, you can probably expect to see those on Kickstarter, yeah. well, it depends how things go. It may be that they, they're able to be on Kickstarter um, before Christmas. It may be um, February, March time um, that these guys pop up. But the ultimate aim with these is to do them in sets of 10. So you'll have a set of 10 warriors with a champion and a magic user, a set of 10 spears with a champion with a magic user, and a set of 10 um, war dancers with uh, a champion with a magic user um, and uh, and then also to blister pack them in sets of three so you'll get um, 
triads of of those guys, and the champions will be fitted within the triads, um, and then there'll be a, a separate pack of three um, mages alongside them, um, and they. Yeah, so, so you'll be able to pick either of those as, as boosters for adding to the, the packs of 10 um, or by themselves. Um, and the, the aim is to tie these in with the release of the new um, uh, The Woods supplement, uh, which is uh, quite rapidly um, uh, quite rapidly coming to fruition now. I think we'll probably see that, if not by the end of September, certainly by the end of October, we'll have something ready to go, so that, that's exciting. Um, and these will be to tie in with the Fae Walkers um, that are going to get more prominence um, in that book. So you've got the um, the guys with uh, standard armament um, that I'm calling uh, Wild Walkers. Um, the guys with the spears are calling war walkers, not not like the stampy Star Wars type, um, but the um, the elfish type. Um, and these guys are going to be the woad walkers, um, and there'll be three classes of, of walker. Yeah, in addition to the way that walkers are normally defined within the woods, which is by the region that they're in. So you have a wood walker, a hill walker, uh, a mine walker, a fen walker, um, so on and so forth. And they're the um, the Fae who guard the uh, the portals out of the mortal realm, um, uh, safeguarding against incursions into uh, into Fae um, by the Tuatha or the other um, folk that are in in the mortal realm. But some of them, um, because the the Fae walkers are exiles from from Anwen, which is the the Fae um, realm, um, some of them have gone rogue. So I'm thinking that possibly the the woad walkers specifically are, are going to be the the rogue elements, um, but not necessarily, um, because some of the some of the rogue fey um, sort of try to integrate into to Arthur society, um, and those those will be the um, the wild walkers uh, here that are are more to Arthur um, in their dress, but. Um, the the uh, Fae walkers interact in different ways with um, that they're left pretty much to their own devices as to how they um, how they integrate into um, the world that they've been banished to um, how they uh, choose to protect those portals a lot of them do it by um, integrating into Tuatha society and then um, forming a contingent to um, stop people from going to certain places or um, spreading a rumour about uh, the dangers of a certain place that is hiding a gateway um, to Anwin. But some of them um, sort of form uh, bosses and, and try and defend the, the gates by arms. Um, so there's, there's quite a lot of variation in um, approaching a, a Fae Walker character. Um, but these are figures that I wanted very much to be usable in something like Ninth Age, in Kings of War, in um, uh, Dragon Rampant, in um, uh, the the Saga um, fantasy series, or whatever you you happen to be using them in. Um, yeah, Age of Sigma or uh, Classic Warhammer, if that's what you're doing. You know, they they should be. Um, generic enough for use uh, in those systems as well. Um, you may note that there aren't any archers here currently. Um, if they're going to be standing in for wood elves, surely there ought to be some archers, and yes, I, I am intending to do also a pack of archers. Um, I haven't got around to that yet. It requires a little bit more modification, a little more, bit more sculpting on top of the, um, the dollies to get them into the right pose uh, for archers, but that is um, that is the plan to have that included as well. That will probably be um, a stretch goal on the campaign, but we'll see how far I, um, I get with sculpting those. Um, so anyway, those are pretty much finished. They need to go off to be cast, they need to be come back, they need to be painted, they need to go into production moulds, and then we'll be ready with costings to, um, to look at putting the Kickstarter together. Um, and I've got a couple of other commission sculpts to fit in around them, in addition to uh, going back into work, so I don't know what my uh, timetable is going to look like in the near future, so I'm just trying to get these things um, 
to the position of being finished so that there's a, a definite line drawn and then I'm ready to, to focus back on um, on going into work if that's, if that's what happens. Um, so yeah, and in addition to that, there's not really anything else that I have um, planned to move on with currently. Um, I've been doing a bit of uh, scenery work um, as well, so hopefully next week I'll be able to show you um, some of the stuff that I've been uh, doing for uh, Mike. So Mike, if you're watching, um, your your little um, fort castle. Um, you you will be getting pictures in the next uh, in the next week, and hopefully that will be uh, a bit of a feature next week. And then I'll be clearing this, clearing my table, um, getting everything packed away, so that if I have time to move on to something else, I have time to move on to something else. If I need to set it up to do videos for for work from home, I can do that. Um, I'm just a bit ready to be uh, flexible when things go back to normal. But I can then focus on doing. Um, the final bits of layout for the supplement for the wood supplement um, because I don't need any physical setup for that um, and I'll probably be able to maintain a small painting area so I've got some bits and pieces to go back to for that um, and the uh, Dreamstone Kickstarter sculpts will hopefully be with me in the next three or four um, weeks so um, that will then take most of this table full of um, packing and fulfilling um, orders. The uh, RPG rule books um, are being printed currently. The card decks are being printed currently. Um, the miniatures are being cast currently, uh, and everything else has arrived and been put into sets and is is ready to go. So uh, as soon as all that turns up, this table will be covered in resin, <laughs> not not um, liquid resin, hopefully, um, but yeah, covered in stuff for me to pack and send out. Um, and that really does take the whole table. I'll try and make sure I, I show you some shots of that because it does. Uh, it takes a lot of space packing a Kickstarter. Um, so yeah, that's what I've been up to. I hope you're staying safe. Um, I hope you're not being too exposed to um, viral kids or adults or uh, anything else. Um, and yeah, take care. I uh, will see you next week.